This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today we're going to talk about politics and insurance fraud and why a charge of insurance fraud, if, if true, is not defamatory. In RMS Insurance Services, Inc., DBA Flanders Insurance Agency, and Owen G. Costanza, versus Donald G. Sattler and various other people, a decision of the Court of Appeals of Illinois rendered on October 17, 2023, a suit claim of defamation by a politician who lost his election failed. Plaintiffs, RMS Insurance Services, Inc., DBA Flanders Insurance Agency and Costanza in his individual capacity filed a 17-count complaint against defendants Donald G. Sattler, Marion L. Thornberry, Elizabeth M. Rogers, et al. And Rogers filed a motion for summary judgment asking the court to dismiss plaintiff's first amended complaint with prejudice. The court granted defendants' motions and dismissed plaintiffs' entire amended complaint. According to plaintiffs' complaint, Costanza was the former president of the village of Poplar Grove. During the 2020 election, Sattler ran against Costanza for the office of village president. Costanza was the incumbent village president at the time. The complaint outlined animosity that existed between Costanza and defendants prior to and after the election. Plaintiffs alleged defendants made defamatory statements about Costanza, including accusations Costanza committed criminal acts, including insurance fraud. Sattler defeated Costanza in the election. However, the plaintiffs' alleged defendants continued to post the allegations against Costanza after the election was over. The trial court, Judge Stephen E. Balog presiding, found plaintiffs alleged the three defendants wanted to ruin Costanza's career in local politics. The crux of the defendants' motion for summary judgment was that their statements are all privileged because those statements are indisputably, materially, and substantially true. Under Illinois law, recovery for defamatory statements in this case will only be allowed if there is a showing of actual malice. This requires proof by the plaintiff that has established both that the utterance was false and that it was made with knowledge of its falsity or in reckless disregard of whether it was false or true. The trial court indicated it was undisputed that Costanza had been accused of, administratively disciplined for, and fired for committing fraud in the general sense of the word while working in the insurance industry. Costanza had a misdemeanor criminal record, and has engaged in fraud as that term was generally understood in his work as an insurance professional. When a party moving for summary judgment supplies facts which, if not contradicted, would entitle the moving party to a judgment as a matter of law, the non-moving party may not rely on his pleadings alone to raise issues of material fact. A plaintiff must present a factual basis that would arguably entitle the plaintiff to a judgment. To state a defamation claim, a plaintiff must present facts showing that the defendant made a false statement about the plaintiff, that the defendant made an unprivileged publication of that statement to a third party, and that this publication caused damages. Even if a statement is defamatory, the statement cannot support a defamation claim if it is true. Regardless, even if a defamatory statement is not substantially true, the statement is not actionable if protected by a qualified privilege. 
Courts must look at the alleged defamatory statements in context, giving the words of the statement and any implications arising from them their natural and obvious meaning. The Court of Appeal concluded that the plaintiffs failed to establish the trial court erred in examining all of the statements made in the allegedly defamatory flyer and the foundation for all of plaintiffs' claims in their amended complaint was defendants' alleged defamation. As a result, defendants' motion for summary judgment challenged all of plaintiffs' claims. Plaintiffs failed to establish the trial court erred in granting defendants' motion for summary judgment as to the entire amended complaint. In my opinion, accusing a person of the crime of insurance fraud is per se defamatory. However, if, as in this case, the charge is true, the defamation charge fails. Costanza was not convicted of the crime of insurance fraud, but he lost his license to act as an insurance agent as a result of insurance fraud and was disciplined for the acts since the charge was true, there was no way for Costanza to succeed in his defamation suit. Politics, Mr. Costanza learned, is a dirty game and will succeed, especially if the allegations against him of insurance fraud was true and there was no reason for him to complain after admitting to the conduct that was charged against him. This video was adapted from my blog, Zalma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zalma.com slash blog. You can subscribe to the blog and receive every blog posting, usually five, sometimes six a week and access to the more than 4,650 posts and blog postings. You can also subscribe for free to the videos at rumble.com or youtube.com. And if you do, I'd appreciate it if you click on the thumbs up button at rumble or the like button at youtube.com. If you are interested in more detailed explanations about insurance, insurance claims, insurance fraud and insurance law, please consider for a very small fee subscribing to my Substack publication. Thank you for your attention.